Hello, my name is Kate Jackson and I work for the Bodleian Law Library. In this session we're going to be looking at making the most of online resources. We're going to look at the difference between databases and the internet, how to search effectively, so getting to know a database, and then look at some free legal resources that you might be able to find on the internet. So firstly, the difference between databases and general search engines such as Google or Bing. With general search engines, you'll find that they're not subject focused, whereas databases have focused subject content, such as legal databases or wider social sciences databases. You'll also search general internet sources just using a string of words, so you just put a phrase in or just a question. However, with many databases, you need to search by connecting terms together in an effective way. With the general internet, also you'll find that you'll get a lot of results coming back, and there's very few times when you get no results at all. However, with databases, the, the search is much more focused, so your results list will be a lot less, and also you'll find that occasionally you'll get no results. In, data, in databases, you'll also be able to sort your results and manage them, so you'll get lots of additional tools to, to control your results and export them. However, in, in general internet searches, there's no way of sorting your results. Usually it's by date, sometimes by relevance, but you cannot control and manipulate your results. You also find on the general internet that there is no quality control. Essentially, anybody can publish to a web page, and as long as it's freely available, then the, the internet will search it. However, with databases, these are produced usually by very knowledgeable publishers, and the content is managed and also has quality control. But the main thing to think about when you're searching the general internet is that general search engines will only look for what's freely available on the internet. It won't search beyond firewalls that publishers have put up to stop you looking at the content. Databases, on the other hand, will only search content that the publisher has paid for, so you get restrictions in place for, from other publishers as well. Bearing that in mind, should you still use the internet for legal research? Well, it can still be good, especially if you're struggling to understand legal terms. It is also very, very good for non-legal information, which might be relevant to your argument. There's also tools you can use on the internet to help you with your search. For example, there's an advanced search on Google and also on Bing, and that lets you get a more relevant result. They can also act as a gateway to the free legal resources, which we'll look at a little bit later. And services such as Google Scholar have become tailored so they only bring back certain information. So the content is slightly controlled. So how do you search effectively? The best way to search effectively is to get to know the databases you have access to. This will save time on your, on your searching. You get to know the content of the database and, more importantly, what isn't included on the database. You also find that there's added functionality that helps you manage your results, save your results, and do things like set up alerts to help you with current awareness. The best way to find out a little bit more about the database is to have a look at the front page and look for a help index. A lot of databases now have short tutorials that are, are there under the help or actually on the page you're looking at, you might find a link at the bottom uh, that, that actually links to specific content. So do have a look at these. Another way to search effectively is to use uh, connectors. And this is classed as Boolean searching. And this is a system that's devised of linking search terms together to make them more relevant. Historically, you would have to use Boolean searches for most databases. However, recently, databases have become more reliant on internet search technology, and a lot of them now have natural language searches that you can use to find your results. However, they're still very, very good because they make your searches more relevant and make you think about the terms that you're using. So let's go through a, a number of the most common Boolean terms. And is probably the most popular Boolean connector. This means it'll search for one term as well as another within a document and only bring up results that have both those terms. So, for example, if you're looking for articles or cases on, on copyright to do with photographs, you could search for copyright and photograph and it'll only bring up results that have both those terms contained in there. You'll find that most databases and, inter and the internet will have this as their default connector, so if you just leave a space between the words, they will just presume you mean and. Another Boolean connector that you might use is OR. This looks for one term or another within a document. 
And it's useful for synonyms. Uh, there's more than one term that could be used for the, the, the thing that you're looking for. For example, photograph or film, if you are looking for cases or articles relating to either of those terms. If you're going to use OR as a connector, then if you put your terms in brackets, then the database will read that first. This is called nesting, and that can make your results more relevant. NOT can be used to exclude terms that you don't want to come back, but frequently appear in documents. For example, if you were looking at copyright, but you specifically didn't want anything to do with photographs, you could write copyright not photograph. And this can be useful if you keep on getting results that are not relevant. However, I would be cautious of using this just in case you exclude things that are actually quite useful to you. Proximity connectors can be used to get a more precise relationship between the terms. It can be quite useful because if you just used AND, you might get one term in the first paragraph and one term in the last paragraph with no connection between the two. However, if you use proximity connectors, you can define whereabouts your terms lie within the document. The most common ones are within the same sentence, within the same paragraph, or within a set number of words. Different databases use different ways of writing these, so check your database, they should have a list of which they use. Another useful way of making your search more effective is to use truncation. This cuts down the amount of typing you do in your search. By using truncation, this database will actually look for different endings for words. For most databases, you'll find it's an exclamation mark, but it can be an asterisk, it can be something different, so do check the database. For example, if you are looking for uh, legal research on uh, employment, you might need documents that include the word employer, employee, employment, employees, and obviously you don't want to write all these terms down and link them with, the, with OR as a connector. However, if you just use employee exclamation mark, the database will actually find that all those endings for you. Again, it's a time saver and also means that you don't type mistakes within your search. Once you've thought about your search terms and, and thought about connectors, you need to put it all together to start building what's called a search string. So think about how your search terms are related. or one, one term more related to another? Um, do you definitely need all those search terms in the same search? Put them all together and try a search just to see what results you get. A lot of the time it is trial and error and you do need to go back and revisit and try different searches. If you are finding that you're doing this, do record what you've actually searched for. It is quite easy to duplicate or not realise which searches you've done. So that's how to search effectively. Now we're going to talk about some free legal resources that you might find useful. We're going to look first at primary legal resources, so legislation and cases. But we'll also mention Google Scholar, which is an article index, and so secondary sources. There's been a move since the internet became more readily accessible to have free legal resources available on the internet. This slide outlines some of the development of this. This has led to many countries building up legal information institutes that is a mixture of primary legal resources, so legislation and case law. The content differs from country to country, with some countries such as Australia and Canada having a lot of their legal material available. Other countries are not as comprehensive. For most sites, the content is just the judgment or the legislation, and there's no commentary at all. So that's worth bearing in mind when you're using them. So let's have a look at some of these legal information institutes. The main gateway to, to all these legal information institutes is something called Worldly. It has international law collections as well, human rights judgments, privacy law collections. It also has some of the older material for English and Welsh law. For example, the English reports is reprinted here. And it also lists collections by subject, which can be quite useful when you're starting out your research. Judgments from UK and Ireland courts and tribunals can be found on Bailey, which is a British and Irish Legal Information Institute site. This is, has a fairly good search facility, and you can browse by name and date. And there's also some law report citations given, which can help. You'll also find links through to things like law commission reports and some other grey literature material on this site. Probably the most advanced of the legal information institutes and the technical base for Worldly is Ostley, which is the Australian Legal Information Institute. 
It has various extra features, for example, LawCite, which is a free law um, citator tool, and also something called Law on Google. It has a very, very good advanced search, which allows you to search for Boolean or for natural language. However, worth noting though, when you search for Australian cases, you may not find the report for the citation you have, but you should find the judgment. It also includes cases from New Zealand. Another fairly comprehensive site is Canley, which is the Canadian Legal Information Institute. This has a slightly different interface than the other legal information institutes, and you can actually search by party name or citation search. It also has citation information, cases citing judgments, and also related cases and legislation, which is a little bit more advanced than some of the other sites. Again, as with Australia, it's worth checking the citation to make sure you have the right court and date. And it's also worth noting there's a French language version in the Canadian site. LawCite forms part of the OSLI database, but you can also search for cases from other jurisdictions. This works as a case citator, so you can make sure there hasn't been any development with your case and find other cases that are relevant to your point. Moving on to legislation, there's a site called legislation.gov, which includes legislation from the UK. This includes primary and secondary legislation, so acts and statutory instruments. It has acts as amended, as well as legislation as originally enacted, which can be quite useful in your research. However, it can take time to update, and so it is better to use paid-for databases if you have access to these, as these are updated more regularly. A lot of the legislation for other jurisdictions are contained within the Legal Information Institutes, which I've already mentioned. If you're looking for US case law, there is also Google Scholar available. You can use a main search box. However, you just need to take legal documents under the box. It has full citations for US federal and state district appellant and Supreme Courts. So definitely worth checking. Moving on to secondary sources, you have Google Scholar for articles. This is a journal index, but it covers all subjects. And so you have to be careful about the search terms to make sure you get results that are relevant to law. It has links through to full text where freely available, but you can also set preferences that you can link to your institution subscriptions. And again, this will save time in your research. It has good citator information, so it will link through to related articles and articles that have cited a particular article. It also has a good user guide. On this slide is the URL, so you can see where to, where to go to for help on Google Scholar. I hope you find this useful. Thank you very much for listening.